Welcome to the Unaffiliated Creatives Podcast, a show where independent artists can learn from other independent artists. My name is K.A. Everyday, and each week, I will be speaking with some of the most creative minds in the indie music space, trying to figure out what they have learned while navigating through the music industry without the support of major record labels. This podcast is brought to you by the good people over at King Neppy Studios and powered by Red Weasel Media. Thanks for tuning in to the Unaffiliated Creators Podcast. I'm your host, K.A. Everyday. Take off your shoes, get comfortable, and stay a while. Do us a favor and please rate the show. And if you have any feedback for us, please email us at unaffiliatedcreatives at gmail.com. The snippet you heard playing was a song titled She's So Fine by indie artist Jaden Pierce. Now that everybody has taken off their shoes and gotten comfortable, Jaden, what you been up to? Man, I've just been, you know, getting ready to release an album. Just been working on my music, getting better at what I do each day, and that's all. That's it, huh? It's light work, huh? Light work. Yeah, I like that. Uh, so, uh, normally, um, when I do these interviews, I ask people, uh, you know, how did they come up with the stage name? But you're a little different, so... I got to ask you, why did you choose to use your real name versus, like, using a stage name? Um, I chose to re- use my real name is because, you know, I'm a real person. You know, I'm a real person at the end of the day. Uh, music is who I am. So when when I want people to know, when they see, like, Jaden Pierce, when they hear that name, I want, like, music to click in their head. You want music to click in their head, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Um, so let me ask you this. Uh, so I see that you was very popular in high school. You won Homecoming King your senior year. I'm assuming that was your senior year, right? Um, and you also won the Young Achiever Award. With that being said, which accomplishment meant more to you and explain why? Um, the Young Achievement Award meant more to me. Um, and that's because, you know, that goes around with the whole school district. It's a total of four schools in our district. And at all the four schools, you know, the people voted me to be, you know, the young achiever because of the things I do, the music I make, you know, just who I am as a person. So that's why it meant a lot to me because that wasn't my choice, but it was the people choice who, you know, brought me in and chose me for that. It meant a lot. Hey, uh, I like I like to see you know people doing good, making good grades, and just being an overall good person. So I like to to see that you won that award. But I just wanted to ask you, you know, what it meant more. Um, let me see what else I got for you. So I also see that you wore number forty uh, when you played football. So uh, so what position did you play? I played middle linebacker. Middle linebacker, man. Yeah, I see you was just flexing your muscles. We're going to get to that in a minute, man. I don't want to jump the gun, but I'm glad you you just did that, man, because that's going to kind of segue into another question I'm going to have for you a little later. So when I saw that you wore number 40, I assumed that you played, you know, linebacker or maybe a defensive end or something like that. But I just wanted to ask you just to make sure that my assumption was right. Yes, sir. You're definitely right, man. You're right. All right, so now that you done flex the muscles, now that definitely is going to segue into my next question. So for your Spotify artist profile pick, I see that uh, the pick, uh, you was wearing a varsity jacket, but you didn't have no shirt underneath the, the jacket. So who told you to take that pick without wearing the shirt underneath? Man, it was my decision. So did you was, so did you want to do that because you was trying to, you know, you was trying to show off your body for the ladies or something? Like what was going on with that? Yeah, I did that just trying to be cool. Oh, uh, okay. Well, well, I guess you don't have to try to be cool. I mean, if you won homecoming court and you winning all these awards and stuff, obviously, you know, you was the big man on campus in high school. So I, I guess you had to be one of the cool kids, right? Yes, sir. All right. So now that we didn't kind of talked about fashion a little bit, you know, you deciding to wear jackets with no shirts on and everything. I had to ask you this question. So uh, I saw several pictures with you wearing bow ties. 
So I got to ask you, do you know how to tie a bow tie or do you wear clip-on bow ties? I wear clip-on when it comes to bow ties. So, so, so a man with your kind of fashion walking around with with no shirts on, under jackets and everything, you don't know how to tie a bow tie? <laughs> right. I, I really comes out to that bow tie, man. I gotta learn. Okay, so I, I'm glad that you that you said this. So I'm gonna take this moment. We we about to have a, a teachable moment. So uh you know how to the tie a regular tie, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so I will tell you that if you know how to tie a regular tie, then you can definitely learn how to tie a bow tie. I will tell you, because you seem like you're a man of fashion. I've seen some of your, you know, your, your pictures and stuff that you be posting on social media. If you're going to be in the fashion like you are, man, at some point you're going to have to start wearing bow ties that you actually tied. I'm going to tell you why. Because guys that know anything about bow ties, they can tell just by looking at the bow tie if, if it's one that you tied yourself or if it's a clip-on. And I'm, right now I'm guessing you're wondering how is that the case, right? Right. I'm about to explain to you. So, when you look at a clip-on tie, the clip-on tie is perfect on both sides. But when you when you tie a bow tie, there's no way that you can get both sides. You know what I mean by both sides? Like, if you look at the knot and then you look at the left side and the right side, there's no way that you can get both sides perfectly identical. So, every time you tie that bow tie, it's going to be unique. So, that's how a, a guy that knows anything about bow ties can tell if you're wearing a bow tie that's a clip on or not. Yeah. So you just so you just learned something today. Just learned something today. So you a professional. You know how to do the bow ties, huh? Hey man, when you when you in the fashion, man, you gotta, yeah. I, I the bow ties that I wear, I they're the bow ties that you tie. And then of course, you know, I get into the pocket squares and the, you know, the loafers, no socks, you know, all of that, man. The belt matching the shoes. You know, and if I'm wearing socks, you know, the socks got to be some crazy socks with the with the fitted blazer with the button down. Hey, man. Hey, this is what we do, man. Hey, you a fashion guy, so I know you know what I'm talking about. So that's why I wanted to ask you about the bow tie thing. Hey. All right. So let me let me ask you this. Uh, so what keeps you busy besides you creating music? Um, I could say school keeps me busy. Um, I work, I work a job. Um, I'm a minister, music at my church, play the piano, work for them, make sure they straight the choir and everything. And um, that's really all. It's school, church, job keeps me busy, keeps me going. So when you're talking about school, are you? You are you you on college now, right? No, I'm a senior still. Oh, okay, okay, a- okay. So the so the picture that I saw with you went at home come court, that just happened. So you so you and your senior year of high school. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like you got your plate full, but I like that, man. They they, they say uh that uh the idol's hands, that's the devil's playground. So you know, I like you being busy, man. Keep you out of trouble. Okay. All right, so you got a song titled She So Fine. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I know a lot about music, man. I really do this thing. So it had a familiar melody to it. Um, and I know my music, so I was able to hear where the melody came from. For that being said, would you like to take the time to explain to the audience how you decided to use that particular melody? And do you want to share with the audience where that melody came from? Uh, Yes, I can do that. <laughs> Well, when when I go into making music and stuff, I think of like what I'm feeling at that moment. Like at the time I had wrote that song, um, you know, I was like feeling, you know, this type of way about a girl, you know, just certain. I'm not gonna. Girl, I was talking about it. like I was like, if I can get this girl, man, if I can get her, then you know, probably be something, you know, good. So, um. I wrote that song, you know, got it all together. And the melody, man, I was thinking like Michael Jackson, like uh, Michael Jackson type. I was like, what will Michael Jackson do? So 
I, you know, looked at uh, Rock My World, you know, watched that video, put that little bit together, and then her beat, and I was like, okay, let's see what I can do this. And I just came up with something. And plus the piano helped too. You know, hearing the piano before I sing, like, I, I use the piano, the piano keys to, like, you know, do what my voice is doing. And then I come up with the lyrics, and then boom, there's the song. So. All right, so I, I thought I was right, but I wanted you to take the time to explain it to the audience. So I made some notes with my questions that I was going to ask you. And as soon as I heard that song, I typed, Michael Jackson, You Rock My World. And then I actually went, found the song on YouTube just to make sure. I was like, hold on, let me make sure that I, I thought I heard what I heard. And sure enough, I went and played that. And I was like, yep, that's what, that's what that meant. But I didn't I, I, I didn't want to be the one to say it. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna give him the opportunity to really break down that whole writing process and how he came up with the idea to come up with the with the melody for that song. So that that's cool. All right, all right. So I saw a music video of a song titled Forever Together. And then the song, it had a country feel to it. You was even wearing a cowboy hat in the video. Um, with that being said, what made you want to do a country song? Uh, well, I'm I'm in Oklahoma. Probably I'm in Oklahoma. That's what people like. So I just went and went and made one to see what would happen. And uh, as of right now, Forever Together is kind of doing good. It's getting better every day. Stream going up, and but yeah, I just wanted to do something for you know the people here. <laughs> see what they think about it. <laughs> so you so you're trying to use the excuse that you're from Oklahoma and I get it you know in that area is very heavily influenced you know with the Cowboys and everything so are you telling me that if you lived in another part of let's say you lived in New York City are you telling me that you wouldn't have been led to make a country song because you're not in an area that's heavily influenced by that cowboy culture Man, I'm versatile, so I don't know. I I do. I, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, right. If I wasn't in the area and they didn't do all that country stuff, then probably yeah, I'm with New York culture. You know, sounding. I adapt to culture. You know, I adapt. Hey, I actually liked it. Don't be honest. And again, we we kind of you know going back to the fashion conversation for a little bit. So I actually own. Uh, at least three cowboy hats myself. And like I said, I like to be different too. And I, and I, I mean, I'm in Virginia, so the area that I live in is not really heavily, I mean, you don't see a whole bunch of guys walking down the street with cowboy hats on, but I just like the fact that, you know, people, you know, let's be honest, you, you don't see a lot of black guys walking around with cowboy hats anyway. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get me a couple of cowboy hats. And then when I got the cowboy hats, I was like, you know what? I can't just stop with the cowboy hats because, you know, to me, if you're going to do it, you got to do it. So after I got the hats, then I actually went out and got a pair of real cowboy boots. So I rocked the cowboy <laughs> boots with the hat. And then I took it a step farther. I went out and actually got the, you know, the, the actual shirts that they be wearing. And I even got a couple of bolo ties, too. Oh, well, you got the whole set, huh? <laughs> hey, 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 man, I told you, man. Look, look, this fashion thing, that's what we do, man. Yeah, I, I had. To, if you're going to play the part, man, you got to dress up all the way. You can't have to do it. I feel you. But yeah, when I saw that, though, it made me smile. I was like, yeah, he got the cowboy hat on. He got the cowboy, you know what I'm saying, vibe to it. The song had the guitar. And I was like, okay, I see what he's doing. Yeah. All right, so you uh, got an album dropping on April 30th. So can you take the time to, you know, just share with us what can we expect on that album? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you can you can expect some uh, folks on there. Expect some, you know, new school is just just expect change, you know. It's, um, album, it's an album of ten songs. Ten songs are on the album, and um, you know, at all of them ten, pick your poison. You know, just know I'm coming with. It's gonna be something you never heard before. All right, so not only do you sing, you also play instruments. Uh, you play the drums and you play the keyboard. Um, but if you could only play one instrument for the rest of your life, which one would you choose and explain why? Um, I would choose the piano because piano is just a 
it's just feeling to, you know, it's, piano is just the world, like, I don't know, man, I just love piano, I love it, I love it with, my, with all my heart, man. So, so did you did you learn how to play the piano before you start seriously like singing? Because I know you started playing instruments when you were young, but I don't know which one came first. Did you learn how to play the instruments before you started singing, or did the singing come first? I learned how to play the, play the instruments before I started singing. Okay. Now, um, this wasn't even a question that I had even prepared to ask you, but but since we're having this conversation. Do you feel that learning how to play the instruments made it easier for you to transition into singing, or it really didn't matter to you either way? Uh, it made it easier, way easier, way easier. Okay. The reason why I'm asking because I'm a singer too, but I don't know how to play the piano. I've always wanted to to learn how to play, but it's just something that I never really learned how to do. But since I've been singing. At a young age, I was always good at just being able to hear certain melodies and certain keys. So it was easy for me to sing because I could just lock in on the notes and, and I could tell if, you know, I was singing the right pitch or not. I don't know. I guess some people just have that ability to hear it and some people don't. I was blessed with the ability to be able to hear that. So it kind of helped me with, with the singing stuff anyway. Hey, whatever it takes. <laughs> whatever it takes, man. So I wanted to ask you this question. Um, so what was your secret to getting verified on Instagram before everybody could now just go out and just buy the blue check? Uh, well, they had me put my license in. You have to show your license or who you are. And I've been all over the world, you know, playing instruments. So I might be known for, you know, piano and all that. In some kind of way, man, I got my blue check mark and, you know, it's and got my business together, you know. Got a business for myself, for my music, for my merch, you know, for all that stuff. And now here I am, growing. Hey man, you you doing you doing a lot better than most. You know, I know you've been seeing where a lot of people now, you know, they've been buying their blue checks, but you, you know, you was one of the godfathers, you know. You 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 had the blue check before everybody could just go out and buy. So, you know, you you've been doing big things right. for a while. So all right, uh, so let me ask you this question. So with you growing up in the church, uh, could you see yourself doing gospel music at some sometime in the future? Yes, sir. Okay. So you so you still leaving the door open. You don't know if that's gonna be, you know, a definite thing, but you are open to the possibility of doing gospel music at some point. Correct. So let me ask you this, and this again, this is just kind of piggybacking off of that question. Um so I'm assuming that you you might have not made a whole gospel album, but have you at least made some gospel songs so far? Uh, yes, I made one, but my parents were singing on it. I just made the the beat. I just made the music to it. It's called Never Alone, and that's not the only song I made. The gospel that's out right now. So 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 you so you in a family full of singers, so it's not just you. Right, but I'm the one that's on the professional side. Like I'm in the business part of it. Like I'm really, I'm really. It's like a career to me. Like I'm really pursuing this. They just sing the scene. <laughs> now you, you, you making it seem like they don't, they don't, like they don't be putting in that work. Like they ain't doing their thing, man. Let me find out. Y'all gonna be like the next winings or something. Everybody in the family can sing. Okay, I, I, I see what y'all doing, man. Okay. All right, so let me ask you this. So, uh. What are your goals when it comes to your music? Uh, when it comes to my music, my goals are to work with other artists, um, be able to make beats with other artists, and get a Grammy award. I just want one Grammy, man. Once I get my one Grammy, I'll be in the background. They can have whatever. You know, I just want to get a Grammy, man. Hang it up. Um, All right, so now... I I'm have I gotta ask you this question because I didn't even know I know that you play you know the keyboard and you know you played the drums but just because you know how to play instruments doesn't always translate to making beats so I didn't know that you made beats so when you make beats is it basically live instrumentation or are you making beats like you know like producers like Khan you know the people that actually go in and they just like 
using like the NPCs or like sound pads and they just like adding all these sounds together? Like, how do you make beat? I do both. So, so you just, so, so, so you just do everything, huh? Everything, man. So now I guess I got to start asking you, is there anything that you can't do? Uh, I can't play a uh, guitar. I can't play like, just play like this. I can't play strings. Um, I can't play trumpet because I never learned those things. And uh, what else? And that's all. I can't play strings or horns. That's all I can't play. But anything else I can play. All right, so let me ask you this question. What made you want to start selling merch? Uh, well, I know I need money for my music and stuff, so I had to find some kind of, some kind of, you know, a stream of income come in. So selling merch is how I've been getting my income and all that. So that's what I had to do. Okay, so uh, just to let you know, so the so the the premise of this podcast is independent artists learning from other independent artists. So I couldn't let you get out of here without asking you this question. So what mistakes, if any, have you made so far in your music career that other people can learn from? Um, do not, um, don't let anybody use you, you know, make sure that you give them a budget or something. Don't do things free. Cause you know, nothing is free in this world. Uh, what other thing, is don't mess with them fake accounts, man. Fake accounts will hack the crap out of you. Because I had one account before this one. I fifty thousand God took wiped all took my whole account, man. Took my whole account. So I had to start from scratch and get myself back up. So just just you know, don't let people use you. Don't go for that bull crap out there. Keep on doing you and um some kind of keep praying. And once you do them things, man, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. Okay, we, we got to circle back for a minute. So so you got to explain it. You said something about don't fake account. So what exactly are you talking about? Like, don't don't fake, fake account. Don't give them info or any, anything like that. Like, now I've got to the part where you can't even give out your cash app stuff. Don't do that. You know, they'll mess you up. Wow. I was, young. I was young when I made this mistake. I was like 16. 16 man and tap on an account, you know, start texting. Oh, I can get you this, that, that. So um, went for it. Just don't go. Okay. That's speaking of scams, I actually got a uh email scam the other day. I'm gonna be honest with you. Cause no, like you know, you can kind of tell it just sounds like a scam, or it's just something about it don't look right, man. This was probably one of the best ones I've ever seen. And a lot of other people, I, I found out later on that day, I guess, got hit with the same email. But one of the things why it seemed legit was because, you know, most of these scams you see, you know, the people always quick to, you know, ask for money. Or they say, hey, man, you know, if you just send me, you know, $200, da 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 then whenever, you know, we link up with you, da 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 we'll give it back to you. Well, this email wasn't asking nothing about money. They wasn't even hinting at wanting money, so it just seemed legit. So I actually went and reached out to the real person through social media. I was like, hey, you know, I just want to make sure, did you just email me asking me about beats or is this a scam? And it took a while, but the guy actually hit me back and was like, oh, no, that's not my email address. I was like, man, so there was a scam, but it, it, sounded, it sounded legit though, for real. All right, so watch out for the scams and um, keep praying. So yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, words. Where's the wisdom there? Um, so take the time to tell the audience anything that you want them to know that you haven't already talked about. Um, for the audience, man, all I can say is I make music with a positive vibe. I make music that, you know, that can reflect off, you know, the real and to keep you up, to keep you up, man, because there's no reason to be down when you're breathing. You know what I'm saying? You you living life, so you know enjoy every moment you can because you know you never know when it's your time to go. So don't let this social stuff you know stop you from being you. Don't try to be like crowd. Be like just stand out. Stand out. Um. So before we get out of here, do you have anything that you want to ask me? Uh, how long have you been doing you know the podcast? 
the one question everybody always want to ask me. So this is not going to be a straightforward answer, and, and I'm going to try to explain why. So this is not the first podcast that I've, I've done, but to answer you, your question as far as this podcast is concerned, I actually uh, uploaded the first episode um, in November. It was probably right around Thanksgiving, and I think how the industry works, I think that's actually the time of the year where most podcasts don't even be putting out material because they know it's like the holidays and stuff. But I didn't even care about that. I just wanted to get in the habit of doing it, recording it, putting them out, and being consistent with putting one out, at least one out every week. Um, but I've been a host or a co-host on other podcasts. One of them was like went way back to like three years ago. So I've been doing interviews and being guests on other shows and other podcasts for a total of at least three years now. Wow, that's amazing, man. Yeah, I just, uh, and I'm pretty sure you probably experienced this too. So the reason why some the other podcasts, you know, it was a little bit harder to be more consistent is because one, when you're dealing with other people, everybody's time, schedules and stuff got to align. And sometimes, you know, you got to wait on other people. Well, with this podcast, it's just me. So I'm the one that, you know, sets the schedule. I'm the one that's doing all of the recording and editing the video, editing the audio and putting them out. So I'm in control of making sure that it keeps going every week. Okay. Awesome, man. So do you make music yourself? Yeah, so I, I'm a singer. I, I rap sometimes really just to be funny, but it's really only because people that really know me know that I'm not really a rapper. But So I, I'm a singer first. I rap just to kind of goof around, have fun. I do make beats. And I do this podcast. I do the so podcast, do and and I interview people for other stuff that's not necessarily tied to this podcast. Okay, so you do it all, man. No, I don't do it all because I'm not like you. I don't know how to play any live instrument. So all of the beats that I make are like you just banging on a, you know, like a, something that produces a sound, or I'm just finding sounds from different places and I'm putting it in a program. It's all digital. None of my stuff is live instrumentation. Oh, uh, okay. Now, I will tell you something that I do, and if you haven't done this, I might be giving you a little trick that you're going to be like, you know what? I never thought about this. So since you can sing, this this will really work for you. So you know how a lot of times now the whole thing is people always try to find samples. What a cheat code to, to trying to find a sample is if you, if you i give you a perfect example. Let's say this, the song you just did, if you actually wanted to sample that song, you know, like a part of that song and put it in the song that you made. So you know how to sing, right? So you just go sing the clip that you want to sound like sample. And then once you sing that part, then you pull it in the program and then you can just muffle the sound and it's going automatic, to automatically give it that sample sound. And then, you know, they got the sound effects where it sounds like the old record plan. Once you do that, it's going to sound just like a sample. You just give me some game. Yeah, I just, see, now and then, look, why? You about to come up with a song, they're going to be like, yo, where did you get that from? I'm like, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. That's how you... That's how you do the sample thing. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, you can go out and actually try to clip the actual song and bring it in and try to sample. But to me, it's a lot easier with technology. I'll give you a perfect example. So you go out and you know you can look up you know, this particular song and it'll tell you what key the song's in. So once you figure out what key the song's in, then you know you can go in and you can sing it to match that key or you can put it in the key that's still comparable to the key that the original song was in, and you pull it in, make sure that the, that the keys match with the rest of the sounds in your track that go your sample. Yes, wow. I'm yes. going to keep in touch with you because I got a feeling you, now that I didn't, I didn't explain it to you, you you about to go off and you about to get crazy. I'm going to be like, oh, so he, <laughs> he did that sampler thing I was talking about. <laughs> man, I'm, yeah, I'm about to. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, once you do it one time, you're gonna be like, "Oh man!" Once you do that, you ain't gonna never go back to ever trying to make a real because there ain't no point. If you a singer, you can just sing whatever song or whatever reference you need to make the sample. I think 
part about that is getting getting the license though. If you know, if you did did it the old way. Look, man, that's a whole another conversation, man. I, look, man, I can't tell you how to do all that, man. If you want to, it's ways around everything. I'm just telling you that if, if you want to go mm-hmm. out and you st- want to start making samples, the easiest way to do it is just sing whatever sample you want to be your sample, bring it in, and then you can play all your other instruments, you know, the keys and the drums and all that stuff with it, and there go your sample. Yes, sir. All right, well, before you get out of here, tell the audience where they can find you online. Uh, you can find me on all platforms. I suggest you, but my suggestion is for y'all to go on YouTube and look me up instead of all the other. Go on YouTube, look at them videos, and go go check me out. See if, if see if you like me or not. You know, just go check me out. All right. So when they're going to check you out, they're going to just just type in your real name, Jaden Pierce. All right. So there ain't no stage name. You got to go type in his real name, and all this stuff gonna come up. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to come on the podcast today. Uh, I like what you're doing. Keep up the good work, and uh, I'll be talking to you soon. Yes, sir. Sounds good, man. Thank you for the opportunity. All right, man. I'll holler at you.